Hey Chris, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me today on this call. Um, yeah, I just want to have a quick chat to you about, um, you know, all the things that are going on in the world and, and a bit about, you know, how you guys are, are adapting and, and, and changing to, to cope with it. Um, so yeah, do you want to just introduce yourself and, uh, and, and your job title and where you work? Sure. Yeah, my name is Chris Tan. Uh, I'm the Chief Financial Officer for Bailey Nelson. Uh, Bailey Nelson is a direct consumer eyewear and eye care brand, so we make our own products and uh, manufacture them and sell them in our own stores. Cool. Um, so, and obviously just, uh, you know, in these sort of unprecedented times, as, as we all keep, keep hearing, um, you know, what's your sort of take on, uh, on, on the sort of world of retail right now? Uh, what's your take on, uh, you know, sort of how things have, have impacted you? Sure. I mean, I mean, I think what's happened in the last month, like the virus has really caught on, has been a, I mean, it's a, it's a, unforeseen event that I think, you know, has impacted every single company, pretty much every single company in the world. So I don't think whether you're a large retailer or small, small retailer, restaurants, food and beverage, I don't think I've ever seen anything in the history of time that's basically impacted, you know, that wide of a span in terms of uh, companies. So um, I don't think any companies has come unscathed from this. Uh, for us personally, um, you know, being a optical retailer, we, you know, it's a high touch uh, personalized service that we provide in our stores. Um, you know, we have a lot of interaction with our customers and our guests. So uh, we really had to step back and really take a look at, you know, does it make sense for our stores to be open? You know, and I think as, as you saw kind of store closures, you know, we made that decision to close down our stores as well. And we also had guidance from our, um, the optometry associations and uh, that kind of provided more um, kind of instruction for us in terms of how to conduct our business. Um, so ultimately, we had we chose we made the decision to close down all our stores. Uh, we have stores in all markets across you know Canada, UK, Australia, and New Zealand. And uh, you know at this point in time, it's uh, you know just online business is what has turned on, and you know we're certainly you know focused on driving that channel. But you know at the same time, for our business, we're largely a physical bricks and mortar type business, so um, a lot of our revenues come from that channel. Yeah, so you've you've obviously kind of touched touched on it there, um, but yeah, I mean, is is um, is the biggest impact then um, just the, the the closure of, uh, of of stores? Is that the biggest impact to your business? Yeah, yeah, that would be. I mean, I think from a supply chain perspective, I would say in general, um, we've been we've done a good job. To, we have a strong supply chain, and that has largely, with with some disruption, uh, been able to stay stay the course. Um, it's largely just our, our physical footprint that has been the biggest impact. From a support office perspective, I think, you know, we, you know, we we're pretty used to using Google Meets and Google Hangouts. So to quickly kind of shift to a, you know, work from home model, I, I actually felt it was pretty, pretty easy. Um, and then I think what was really important for our support office was just maintaining constant communication. So uh, whether, and I think for a while we had, either daily calls with the leadership team um, or twice or three times a week uh, calls with our entire support office, uh, both in Canada and Australia to make sure uh, they were aware of, you know, the decisions we were making, uh, the considerations we were kind of assessing. I think very important, especially when you're not in the same physical uh, space uh, that we communicate almost more than not. And it's better to communicate more than, than, than to not, or to be, you know, to, to, to be a little bit less. So, um, I think the teams, I think, felt really appreciative that we were transparent um, during these uh, uh, during these times. Yeah, that's interesting. You you, you touched on a, on a couple of things there. Um, so the first thing I picked up on was you, you mentioned there's been there was some supply chain impact. So yeah, do you want to tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, I guess for us, um, we you know our factories are in our factories that manufacture our frames in China. They would have been impacted earlier because uh, China was impacted earlier, uh, so some of their operations would have been uh, slowed down because of that. And then, as they started to come back online, um, that was then you started seeing the impact in the rest of the world. Uh, so we did have, I mean, I think some mitigation because I the locations in China were not in the direct centered kind of areas in Wuhan, as an example. Um, our other lab facility is in. Uh, just in Thailand, and uh, thus far, it's been it remains open. 
there were just a couple of slowdowns with just catching up on orders and things like that. But for the most part, um, we haven't seen you know too much major disruption apart from just a some couple of delays that we had to incur um, kind of when things kind of shifted over. Can Unfortunately, that. Yeah, that's that, that's cool. So, um, so from the other thing that I sort of picked up on as well, you mentioned obviously with uh, having to sort of adapt and uh, and change, you sort of moved more to um, the sort of e-commerce side of things. Um, yeah, any sort of specific changes that, that you've made that have that have had a direct impact? I mean, I guess the we haven't. I mean, I guess the one thing we just noticed was. Um, a, a lift in our online sales across all regions. So, I mean, online for us is a fairly small portion of our business. It is largely through physical stores, but at the same time, uh, you know, with not a lot of marketing and not a lot of kind of overt, um, you know, initiative to try to drive traffic to our site, we still saw an increase um, in almost two or three times our traditional normal e-commerce levels. Um, so that, that was good to see. I think stepping back from that, what we've, uh, wanted to do as a company or decided to do is while our stores are closed, you know, we do have an opportunity to uh, continue to make some investments within our digital experiences. Um, and we have almost this little window where we can catch up on, you know, whether it's capabilities or digital capabilities, uh, improvements to our website and experience that, that we are now kind of starting and, and pursuing. So um, ideally when stores are back on, online again, you know, we've completed some of these projects and, you know, the company is almost in a better state than it was before. So those are, I think, are our main kind of objectives in the next few months. That's really interesting. So taking the opportunity to, uh, yeah, to do some, some um, uh, sort of internal projects and some things that obviously are normally in the back burner. That, that's great. Um, has there been any sort of direct changes to your e-commerce offering? Um, I think I noticed some, some sort of changes around um, return dates and, and also around shipping. Is, is that something that you've affected uh, and, and has it had a has it had an impact yeah we, we did I mean we did a couple things in that when we when we decided to close down all our stores we still had open orders that were placed in store but there was no store to now go to so we obviously offered all of our customers the ability just to have them either ship directly to their home um, or we would in Canada we made it available so that they had the option if they wanted to, to come pick it up and we would just set a specific time and location for them to come pick up the order and then make sure that there was adequate distancing and things like that put in place. Um, so any important for us, we just wanted to give the customers kind of optionality and how they wanted their products to be delivered. Um, and then we wanted to make sure all, as well at the same time that there was communication uh, made to them because some of their orders were delayed for some time as we were transitioning. Um, you know, in terms of other things that we are uh, looking to do, we haven't, exactly launch this but we will probably do this in the next bit or try it out is just how do we continue to engage with our customers while our stores are closed and um, be able to offer some services to our customers that you know without having a physical store so we are looking at things like uh, a video zoom kind of catch up where, where we have a virtual styling um, delivered online where we'll have one of our you know store managers who you know understands the product and can work with a customer to kind of show them how to think about styling their frames and then it will ultimately assist them in their decision. So we will kind of test that out as well and see, see what the reception's like. Yeah, that'd be great. So, uh, so you'd have like a, somebody who works as a sort of, you know, a uh, retail assistant helping you out and give you some advice just, you know, via, via the e-commerce site and via the, uh, via zoom. That, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you talked about it a bit as well, but you know, you said obviously it's been a pretty, it's been a pretty good shift to work from home from, from the, um, from sort of, you know, obviously you're working in Canada and you're working across region anyway. So obviously you're used to, to conferences on online. Um, how about sort of the rest of the team? Obviously these lots of workers and staff, are, have, have you had to sort of manage sort of layoffs or, or, or people being stepped down or, or are they people working from home? How, how's that, how's that sort of panned out? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean, obviously with what's happened, I mean, it's impacted every company. We did have to obviously look at cash preservation. I mean, that's a, we had to absolutely do that. Um, and so we have made different changes across our kind of, kind of staff across the company. Uh, we did furlough some employees, um, especially at the store level, just because if the stores are not open, we're not able to um, keep the staff there. Um, fortunately with the, 
with the programs that are now been offered through Australia, Canada, and UK, and New Zealand, actually across all the markets we're in, there is some form of a wage subsidy that has been provided. So what we've since then done is brought back our um, kind of full-time store staff uh, across all our markets, um, of course, depending on the legislations in each, but, and then they're able to at least get, get the wage subsidies from the government. So that's, that's, that's been really good. And it, to an extent that they're able to actually, like as an example in Canada, we're now able to bring back some of those store managers and deploy them onto certain projects. So they will either be available for customer service, uh, online chats, uh, order fulfillment, um, you know, training and documentation and things like that. So um, those are things that were, are good because uh, we can now leverage the skills and talents that we have and, and put them to use, which is great as well. Yeah, that's that's really that's really good to hear, and it's really good to hear that you know that the markets you, that you're in have obviously there's been some um, some government relief. Is there also been sort of relief from from partners, so landlords, that sort of thing? Is there any any support there, or or is that is that still challenging? It's ongoing. Yeah, I think the landlord um, situation I think kind of varies a little bit by market. I think in Australia it's been good that um, the government has provided I think more specific codes of conduct in terms of how tenants and landlords should conduct themselves in this kind of situation. I think that's been really good to at least provide a framework uh, which we are now you know, engaging with the, each of the landlords to have negotiations with that. Um, but even in, a, even in Canada and UK, um, you know, this will take some time to iron out. I think the landlords have a certain position that they're taking. Um, tenants at the same time have been impacted severely. So in my view, there needs to be some level of sharing um, in the impact and you know tenants can't wear the full impact of this uh, pandemic and because we, we ultimately have suffered a permanent loss in revenue that we'll never get back um, so our ability to pay rent is not you know just not possible uh, during a downturn like this yeah yeah that, that's that's really interesting um, and obviously you, you mentioned it um, just a few moments ago but you obviously said that sort of managing cash flow in, in, in a time like this is obviously is, is really key and, and that's and cash flows obviously is is a, is a sort of key challenge that keeps coming up sort of time and time again is, mm -hmm. um, across the board. So, I mean, is there anything as a CFO that you've learned um, across this period in, in, with respect to cash flow that that could be sort of helpful for others, or anything that you've um, you know you've deployed, or any sort of approach that that's really helped you guys? I mean, I guess a couple of things. I mean, I I would say one um, in situations like this, you can't hesitate. You need to take action quickly. Um, everyone is operating on limited information or information that's kind of fed daily that changes. I think fortunately for us, one of the things that we um, did as a company was we, we took action quickly. Uh, we made decisions around what costs we wanted to cut, uh, what decisions we had to make at the support office level. Um, and because of that, we were able to kind of ramp down our costs uh, quickly. Um, you know, I think we had the benefit of having some flexibility in our cost structure to be able to be a bit more nimble. I think that helps because we're not a huge company that has many layers of infrastructure. I'd say we're a smaller business that is a bit more nimble. Um, that's allowed us to be able to flex, um, you know, what's, what's happened. Um, I mean, the other part is just maintaining communication with our counterparties. So whether it's key suppliers um, that we work with from the factory lens side um, to, you know, landlords and, um, this is a time that's unprecedented for everybody. So maintaining communication, being transparent in what's happening to us, uh, what we require. Um, I found that approach has led to a good kind of mutual support for each business. Um, and that's allowed us to be able to, you know, be able to, you know, negotiate payment terms and things like that. That has certainly helped us in managing our cash flow. Yeah. That that's super interesting, and it's a, yeah, it's great to hear that you were uh, you know sort of capable uh, to to do so, and and I think that's really interesting about sort of acting acting fast. You know, again, I think that's that's obviously key, and and you know, um, it's sort of as we're seeing in other places, if you, you don't respond, it's 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 um, yeah, it can become more problematic very very swiftly. Um, yeah, so I mean, you obviously mentioned sort of you're speaking quite sort of positively about some projects that you're going to run internally, um, some things that you've sort of learned. So is there anything that you're doing now? you weren't doing before um, that you'll, you'll carry on um, after things sort of get back to, to some semblance of normality? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. I mean, obviously there are a number of different projects we are, um, that we have underway. I would say one of the things that um, 
we will do or we're evaluating is, you know, now that our, you know, our business obviously is more digital now than because no stores open. When uh, our business is back up and running again and we have all our stores, you know, what kind of, how does our customer experience evolve and what can we offer digitally to continue to complement the in-store experience? And so I think maybe, and I think what we'll need to do is learn from all the different things that we're doing now. Um, there will be some that work and there'll be some that, you know, might not work. And I think the ones that are either providing great customer experience, strong engagement, you know, drives retention. I think those are the ones that we would want to continue to, to provide. So as an example of the, you know, the virtual uh, assistance, or if it's a successful initiative, then I would say we would, want, we would want to keep those things. And if it doesn't work, then obviously we wouldn't. But that's one where I think, um, you know, can be helpful, especially if you have customers who are not near our stores, but still want to try and have a, a conversation with someone and then from post that they'd be able to purchase, I think that would be certainly beneficial. So I think those are some of the things that we're, uh, we would look to change and evolve. Um, apart, other than that, I do think when, you know, when business reopens again, I don't think it's gonna go back to normal right away. Um, I don't think any company can just expect sales or just the traditional way of operating to be exactly the same. So I think for us, we'll have to just reassess what does our in-store experience look like? Uh, what kind of social distancing measures will we need to put in place to make sure a customer and our employees are comfortable and also safe? Um, and also what would, what would happen if the, if the virus came back again in a second wave? So I think those are some of the contingency plans that we're, we're uh, kind of thinking about as we kind of plan for the reopening of the stores, which again is kind of undetermined at this stage. Yeah, that's that's super interesting. I mean, it's I think that's going to be felt across the board, right? So we're going to be sort of you're preparing to reopen, but you're preparing to reopen in, in in a new world. And what does that look like? And yeah, I think that's really interesting. The focus on um, creating great online experiences and the focus on creating new in-store experiences. You know, with a uh, with a what with a very safe distance, I guess. So yeah, no, that's 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 super interesting. And um, no, I'm just I'm stoked that you guys have obviously you know things are things are you know chugging along and things are things are okay and um yeah it sounds like you've got some interesting projects and some interesting times ahead so yeah that, that's fantastic um any other things that you'd like to share or you know things that you've you've sort of learned or things that you know you think that um other businesses might be able to uh you know find some um some inspiration from uh i mean i think i'm really proud of the way we've um handled and treated our employees kind of during this time not every decision is easy to make. Um, I think the most important thing that um, I think we've learned from this is just the importance of transparency um, and just being honest with what's happened. It's not an easy situation, but I think employees will understand when, if things are not, you know, if we're being honest about what's happening and right from the very beginning, um, we've, we've done that with, with our store teams, with our support office. And I think that, that is very critical in a situation like this. So. Um, and to get responses back from from our employees, kind of being appreciative and grateful for that, I think is is uh, great to see. Yeah, I think exactly. I think everyone uh, on some level, um, you know, understands that, that this is something that we're all going through. We're all in this together, and um, there's a sort of there's a sort of empathy mm -hmm. and connection between humans that you know might not have been the case in in, in another sort of situation. So I think yeah, you're right. Sort of that. Transparency and honesty is absolutely is absolutely key in just being sort of authentic. So uh, so yeah, that's a really nice nice spot to end actually. I think so. Yeah, Chris, thank you so much for jumping on the call. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'll be in touch and uh, I'll speak to you speak to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it.